It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. My friends, I have what I know is going to be a great Masterpiece Friday episode for you. The reason why I know that is because it's pre-recorded. I've already done it. In fact, this is another extended play lounge that I am releasing here on YouTube. I didn't plan to do this this week, but uh, side one of Aerosmith's Toys in the Attic, which I recorded yesterday, has been blocked worldwide. So I decided to release another Extended Play Lounge episode that originated on my Patreon site. I do two of these full albums every month, y'all, and this episode featuring the Yes album from Yes was our 53rd in this series, and it was recorded back in early October of 2023, of last year. So when I put up a poll here on YouTube recently, this album came in second to A Farewell to Kings by Rush. So uh, I uh, released The Farewell to Kings as the people requested last week, and I thought it appropriate to release the Yes album uh, this time uh, as it came in second. So uh, I just didn't expect it to come this early, <laughs> but I'm happy to listen to it with y'all again today. Anytime is a good time to listen to great classic Yes, and I absolutely loved this album and I'm happy to share it with y'all today. But before we do, I am happy to welcome NordVPN as a sponsor of today's video. NordVPN has been my VPN of choice for a few years now, y'all, and I absolutely love their service. The network is always reliable and fast. The VPN goes with me all over the world, and just in the last 30 days, it has protected me from over 20,000 ads and trackers and other internet vulnerabilities. So as I do my work here on The Daily Doug, most days I am uploading and downloading very large files to the internet and NordVPN provides the peace of mind that I need to run my online business without fear. And now, NordVPN has partnered with Saley to provide even more quality services to their customers. So I'm sure that y'all know who NordVPN is, but you might not know who Saley is. They are a new eSIM service app brought to us by the people at Nord Security. So here's how it could work, y'all. Our good friend John, uh, who is a member of our team, recently traveled from Europe to South Korea for a music conference, and he was worried about his roaming charges and his data usage as he traveled internationally. And uh, our connection with him while he was traveling was hit and miss. So with Saley, Folks like John and us don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Here's how it works. You, you download the app once, and then once this eSIM is installed, it eliminates the need for users to install or acquire a new eSIM or regular SIM card. This eSIM provides an internet connection wherever you travel, and it saves you money on roaming fees. You simply buy a plan, install the eSIM, and then activate your plan and travel with secure internet access and data at your fingertips. And all of Saley's plans are compatible for both iOS and Android devices. So friends, this offer is quite wonderful and it's exclusive and not available everywhere. When you purchase a two-year NordVPN plan, you will get an extra four months at no extra charge, and you'll get up to a 20 gigabyte Saley data voucher. So make sure you click on my special URL that is in this video's description and pin comment to redeem your discount with NordVPN and Saley today. And as always, if you're not completely satisfied, they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. Okay, y'all, with that being said, let's get into today's video. As I uh, said, what you're about to hear is pre-recorded. I recorded it last October for my Patreon community, which I invite you to be a part of. It's patreon.com slash Doug Helvering. It's a great community, and I hope that you'll be a part of it. Uh, so let's get to it, y'all. This is EPL number 53, the Yes album from Yes. 
Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Doug for what is going to be our extended play lounge episode number 53. We're getting back to some yes today, friends, with their classic album, the Yes Album. Uh, this won a five-way poll of Yes Albums over on Patreon with a true majority of the vote given five options more than half of y'all all picked the same album. So it, it seems to be a vaunted, cherished album in the discography of Yes. And I've never listened to the entire thing all the way through. And I'm happy to do that. Now I've got some of my favorite Yes albums out here. Uh, of, of course, Close to the Edge up on the wall. I've got uh, Going for the One, Topographic Ocean, Symphonic Live. Over here, this is An Evening with John Anderson. This is a really cool album, one of the first ones that I got. And I can't remember who sent it to me, but it's uh, interspersed with uh, Yes Recordings and an interview with John that was back in the day uh, built to give uh, radio DJs a little bit of an hour off. <laughs> they can play that and and do just fine and i've got some of our other prog heroes uh jethro tall is up there uh we've got the beatles we got elp we got steve hackett representing genesis and uh, it's a fun time and i am ready to dive into the yes album y'all of course uh some of the album is not new to me i have heard yours is no disgrace i have heard starship trooper and i have heard i've seen all good people um, but I've never heard the entire album and, you know, full album listens always bring in extra context to any individual track. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, as a means of introduction, this was their third album. It was released in 1971. It is their first album with Steve Howe and their last with keyboardist Tony Kay until he came back with uh, 90125 more than a decade later. And, uh, and even though it's their third album, it is their first album of all original materials, no covers. I read that they did a lot of covers when they first were formed, and so this uh, becomes a new era for the band with no covers at all, all original material on the album. With this album, they also had uh, use of better equipment, than they had used previously. Both of their first two albums were recorded uh, in an eight track studio. Uh, with this album, they were now working in a 24 track studio. And the album is a full uh, band effort, y'all. All members of the group contributed to the arrangements. And this album was a true commercial success for the band. It charted their historic course through what would become the rest of the 70s with all of their great albums, you know, some of the best all-time prog rock albums. And I believe that with the success of this album, that's where they sort of chart their course and stake out where they're going to go next. It's going to be an exciting listen. We've got John Anderson <clears throat> on vocals and percussion. Chris Squire is on the bass and vocals. Steve Howe is on guitars and vocals. Tony Kay is on the keyboards. He's playing a piano, an organ, and a Moog. And Bill Bruford is on the drums and percussion. Um, I am going to do this as a, uh, a side at a time treatment. I'm going to listen to all of side one, then all of side two. I'll stop it as I need to. But I enjoy, I have come to enjoy, letting the album sides play and just experiencing it as it might have been experienced back in the day. Uh, although I, I was tempted to build a playlist of alternate versions of some of the songs that I've previously heard, I ended up just deciding to uh, respect the album as it is and listen to it almost in its original form. This is going to be the 2008 remastered edition of the Yes album. Off we go with side one, and it starts with a song that I know, and I'm sure you know, it is called Yours is No Disgrace. Off we go. It's just E chords and A chords. That's an E. All the 
organs over here in this ear. Upper minor third. Just using that motive around a bit. Like Chris got his lawnmower, otherwise known as his base, started. That thing is just takes up so much room. Nice guitar work over here. Back to where they came from, I think. That sounds like subtonic. Yesterday a morning came a smile upon your face. Caesar's father's morning glory city human race. On a sailing ship to no minor third. Beautiful guitar work from Steve. Third again. And up the stuff. Just ups the intensity a bit. Up a half step. So they've been here before. This is B flat. You know, one of the main times that I've heard Dorsus go disgrace was at the very end of a very long favorites episode so it's nice to hear this fresh while I have a lot of energy So a different version of verse one. So I'm remembering the lyrics, the meaning behind them. They're referring to Vietnam, right? On a sailing ship to nowhere. It's empathetic. It's not specifically anti-war, but it's definitely a message of empathy and support for those who were drafted to fight and had no other choice. And yours is no disgrace basically means it's not your fault. It makes me remember that these songs are historical, too. This is now 52 years old, and it's a product of its time, as well as just a product of the musicians, you know, but it's their point of view and their artistry that are bringing this to the forefront. That's so cool. Panning the crap out of that. Guitar everywhere.
on the organ down there. It's fun to use that tool. A little trick. being drawn to Steve's playing. Considering that he's the new member, right? He's the new guy on the block. And his guitar playing is really integral to this. Find mutilated armies gather near, crawling out of dirty holes, their morals disappear. I guess that's anti war. And now I remember a different setting of the same text, another different setting of the same text. to be minor. Yours is no disgrace. Oh. Yours is no disgrace. Goes to E. Cool. I may have said this last time, I honestly don't remember. We normally get strophic music in popular music, where the same music repeats but different words. This is different. It's the same words but different music in the verses. Back like what they were doing at the beginning with the key changes. Yep, up a half step to B flat. Really well constructed piece. That was down a half step from five, so back in E. I remember the the end of the entire fan favorites was that. I got so much more out of this, hearing it first. So this is clap. A Steve Howe original. Recorded live, too. Steve 
how solo. Sounds like it's all on an acoustic. Reminds me of listening to Chet Atkins with my grandpa. It's like a country style. Picking and grinning. on the album, by the way, that wasn't recorded in the studio. This is from a live performance in 1970 in London. And it was the first independent composition that, that Steve wrote. And he finished it after experiencing the birth of his son, Dylan, in 69. Uh, Interesting that this made it on the album like this. Shows his versatility and style as a player based on what we heard in the past piece. Uh, I think this is here because the band is introducing him to their fans. So he has a lot of playing on the first piece and then we get a short instrumental from him. Like, here's our new player, y'all. Lovely. Clap by Steve Howe. Up next is gonna be Starship Trooper. I first heard this during our third episode of the Fan Favorites in April of 2022 for uh, a Guitar Month countdown. So more Steve Howe. I've also heard this from their live version of Keys to Ascension. And that's on the channel on YouTube as well. But it's been a while. This section is called Life Seeker, and it's by John. What you can't see can't be very cold. That was a chromatic third move from E down to C, down to B, down to A. Cool. Reused by Steve in his guitar motive there.
quickly off into a new section. This illusion. This section is by Chris. I think it's John and Chris singing together. E, down to D. There's the chromatic third to G, so it's flat three to four, back to major one. It's like four to five, but they're doing it down a step. It's like four to five, but it's plagal. It's three to four. Cool. this before, right? That progression. A major, C major, chromatic third, then a fifth resolution to F, another fifth resolution to B flat, spin it down a half step back into A. modulated towards the end. All over here, guitar. This is going to be the last section, Voom, by Steve. And it's all chromatic thirds. I remember. Yeah. E flat, C. The root of this chord, the major third of that chord, and the fifth of that chord, this, the G is the common note in all of those. Those three chords are not in the same key with all, of, with, with all three, right? Those three chords do not belong in any given key. But the Common tone is glue for that. E flat, C. Repetitive pattern that would be a really cool thing to put some solo over. So far, it's just the rhythm section is churning this, right? Great. 
great way to finish out the album. Sorry, right? It's kind of a coda for the entire side of music. That's how listening to the album can take on a slightly different meaning. Of course, it's as cool as the ending section of this song. It's also the ending section of this entire album side. And it works very well. Here comes the soul and it's like the Beatles passing solos on the end. This is so much fun, y'all. A great side of music. A reminder with Starship Trooper, it's full of this cosmic imagery, right? John's lyrics here were inspired by the novel Starship Troopers by Robert Heinlein. And uh, in a quote, he says, I like the idea of Starship Trooper being another guardian angel or Mother Earth. The third verse is about, you know who I am, just take care of my soul. So it was as though I was writing about my search for truth and an understanding for, of what God truly is. And remember, these guys are young. They're, they're young adults. They're trying to figure out what the hell this life is all about. And this they're they're putting forth their conclusions here right and doing so in a very entertaining way that was awesome y'all starship trooper finishing out side one let's turn the album over shall we while we're hot let's keep going side two i'm ready if you are y'all and we start with i've seen all good people now i have heard this on the radio uh i don't think i've ever given it a critical listen uh, but I am familiar with the tune, and um, uh, I'm excited to hear uh, it and the rest of Side 2, because I don't think I know the rest of Side 2. With I've Seen All Good People, it's actually a suite of two different songs, uh, one written by John and one written by Chris. And we have a guest musician with us here, Colin Goldring is on the recorder. So let's uh, get rolling with side two, y'all, starting off with I Have Seen All Good People. Off we go. I've seen all good people turn their heads each day so satisfied I'm on my way. This has a similar progression to what we've heard before. I've seen all good e, people D, turn their heads C, each day so satisfied G, I'm on a. my way. And they end back in E. But that G natural in E major is something that they've done before quite recently. Take a straight and stronger course to the corner of your life. Make the white Perfect. Run so fast. Just a little bit of undergirt. Heartbeat. To make you More, really nice guitar from, from Steve. Because it's time, it's time, end time with your time, and it's news is captured for the queen to use. So we're looking at and using chess as a metaphor. Move me on, and move me on to any black square, and use me anytime you want. So it's a metaphor for the give and take of a relationship. Move on back to squares. Send an instant comma to me. There's a recorder. Really great syncopation in that line. The rhythm of that is so cool. It's really what makes it makes it work. Move on back to squares. Send an instant. 
It's so lovely. This language is has like an, it has an everlasting feel to it. It's like John again infusing his spirituality in, into this context. I've never noticed that. for a fade out. Well, I don't remember that. That's surprising. That was cool. <clears throat> Up next is a song called Adventure. This is a John song. It's rather short. And I loved the lyrics here when I read in. It's sneaking in, isn't it? Once a peaceful man laid his bed down by a river. Four syncopation with John, melodically. My brain 
still being drawn to a lot of Steve's playing. And Tony's doing some cool stuff on the keyboards here too. So a venture or an adventure without someone to share it with is no adventure at all. I think that's what I get from this. And don't hide away. adventure, this adventure of life, right? A lot of this, the lyrics in here are about exploration of the mind, right? Of just personal exploration, so don't do it by yourself. take a second to say something nice about Bill Bruford. His drumming on this album has been just right down the middle. <clears throat> Hard edge when it needs to be. What a beautiful bit of keyboard playing from, from Tony. That's cool. But Bill's work here is, uh, with, with Chris has been spacious when it needs to be, uh, kind of classically percussive when it needs to be, and full-on rock when it needs to be. It's really great. The last song up is Perpetual Change. See what they got here. Two sevens. I see the cold mist in the night and watch the hills roll out of sight. I watch in every single way inside out. like they went to see and then they did back where they started Four. 
Mixolydian is a great way to finish out an album. Almost like a full song coda. Change is perpetual. Nice. Or Mixolydian, flat seven. sure that I've never heard this, this song. I very much enjoy it. Definitely polyrhythmic, right? Two different rhythms going on at the same time. I'm trying to figure out if it's polymetric as well, just more than one meter at a time. It might be. This also works because of the pixelidian style of scale that they're using. D can, can sustain throughout all of this. It's all over a five chord, it's all over a 
chord over its five, but it's a dominant prolongation here at the end. Finally get to one. I get it, y'all. That's such an enjoyable album listen, isn't it? There's just enough of everything. It's like a, it's like going to a great restaurant and getting and just telling the chef, just bring me what you do, and it's just a lovely, you know, three or four or five course dinner, and it's something you'll remember for a long time. My first time listening to that album all the way through and it's a lovely album it really really is <clears throat> wonderful um while my mind is still here on perpetual change uh, john was inspired to write the lyric for this which again i mean the language is pretty straightforward <laughs> y'all <clears throat> and um, yeah, he's being as straight with us as he ever is. Uh, John was inspired to write the lyrics for this by pondering um, and noticing the view outside of the cottage, uh, his uh, cottage there in the English countryside, and thinking of how beautiful it is, but also how special it is, and how delicate and how fragile uh, the environment is. And in, in that era, I think he was also juxtaposing um, the scenes of humans reaching the moon and exploring, and he's pondering how everything is connected. Uh, not only here on Earth, uh, our, our universe, we're all, we're all, you know, connected at some level. And everything is on, always changing, constantly changing, and showing us new perspectives. And um, I think it's a, um, a message encouraging us to embrace it. Just, you know, all of the materials that we interact with on a daily basis remain the same. Wind, water... Uh, the basic elements, uh, our, just on our day-to-day -day lives, we, we interact with the same so sort of materials, but it's always new, and we always have a new point of view, and change is perpetual. Perpetual change. How about that for a straight-ahead John Anderson lyric? <laughs> this album was a big, big part of what allowed Yes to become Yes. The yes that we all know and love all these years later, right? This album reached number four on the UK charts and number 40 in the United States. But both of their previous albums had failed to chart at all. So this was a big breakthrough for the band. And it provided them space for an even bigger breakthrough within the next year as Fragile would come out, right? And soar even higher on the charts. And, you know, uh, they were in jeopardy of not having the backing from their uh, recording partner, from their label, to keep trying this. So this album, I think, solidified them commercially and gave them a new lease on their musical careers. Without this album, I don't think that there's a fragile, not in the way that we ha know it, or Close to the Edge, or Topographic Oceans, or any of the rest of it. Uh, it reminds me of some of those make-or-break albums that other bands uh, we've seen have. Uh, Rush, you know, with their breakthrough with 2112, um, that just allow 
for uh, especially if if out of the gate you're not not quite there. I think Pink Floyd a little bit as well becoming what the Pink Floyd of the '70s was after you know a few uh, a few albums. Landmark, absolutely landmark. I haven't heard, I don't think anything, mu not much of anything from their first two albums. Uh, those are still quite uh, enigmatic to me. Uh, most of our focus has been on their 70s repertoire. We've gotten to a lot of it. Uh, we're just now starting to get into some of their 80s stuff and, and assorted things, but they're one of my favorite bands. I love these guys, y'all. So I know that I'll get to pretty much everything in time. That's why, you know, we had five albums on our master list. Y'all love Yes too, And I was like, okay, which one uh, next? And by popular demand, overwhelming popular demand, y'all picked uh, this album, and I'm happy that you did. Now, uh, I've heard it in its entirety. I understand more of the context. Some of these other tunes I had never heard. I loved Perpetual Change. I thought Clap was really interesting. And uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful album from beginning to end. So another successful ep episode of the Extended Play Lounge. I really, really enjoyed getting back to Yes for the first time since I believe episode five, and that was Fragile. So episode five was fragile. Episode 53. <laughs> We're finally back to a full Yes album, and I'm happy that we did it. The Yes album on the Extended Play Lounge. Thank you all so much for your participation, for your support. Uh, these are a joy for me to review and give you my thoughts on and just give us an hour or so to listen to a great album together. So thank you for everything, and we will see you next time, y'all, on another edition of the Daily Doug.